I'll start with a small introduction about me. So, okay, hi, my name is Adam. I am a father, big news. Yeah, the kid is already 10 months old, but <laughs> to be honest, for me, it's just like started yesterday. So I'm a family guy first now and developer second, but I love coding. My hobby is coding, my work is coding, my life is coding. And okay, sorry too fast, so I'm a developer. And not so long ago, I joined uh, CLI for Microsoft 65 maintainers, and I try to help as much as I can and uh, break as little as I may. So if you have any questions or need some additional guidance regarding CLI, just ping me up and I, if I can help, I for sure I will. Uh, currently, I work in Hitachi. I'm located in Poland and you can find my LinkedIn and Twitter. So let's move on. What's it all about? So I'm going to talk about uh, a bit about scripts. First of all, why do we need scripts at all? And I'm pretty sure if you worked in for a while now in SharePoint on Prem or Line or just general in Microsoft 365, I'm pretty sure you already did develop some script. You had to develop some script to, to deploy some solution, to do some maintenance, whatever, create a list. So we do scripts to automate stuff. Uh, for example, we have a pipeline and there's a specific step in YAML. We have a partial script to do something in the step, or we just have a script working in the background process, or we just have a lot of steps to do, and we make a script to do them all in one go. Then script is a perfect opportunity for like a one file documentation that does this, that does the stuff and it's documenting it, it. Because for example, when creating list, we can say to someone, okay, yeah, you can go here, we can create a manual, go these steps, then put this content type because we always in this company add this content type or whatever, whatever. You can just have a script that does it, that does it all and is a perfect documentation of its own. Then maybe you want to do a bit something more advanced, maybe something that's not recommended and it's not exposed uh, like officially, but you did some sniffing around the REST API, which is for sure not recommended, but we can leverage and use it. We can use it, usually we can leverage uh, via script, not through the UI. Uh, or maybe we have some uh, company standards that, okay, we do it this way. We have some logging here that we put in this direction. Some scripts is also a perfect way to impose those. And then maybe there's a really trivial thing like the UI changed again, right? And this, the scripts and the, um, the REST endpoints don't change so frequently like the UI, at least I hope so. So script is a perfect approach here as well. So I'm pretty sure you will create a script in the near future or you already done so. And then you're going to have like more and more and more. You'll end up with a repository of scripts. And then when you have another task, like do, please do a script to, to do something, you're like, ah, I created the script so like some time ago. I don't want to start from scratch. I want to find it. And then the problem is to search for the right location. Probably you, maybe you have every, every script in the same location or in the context of your projects. We'll see. So that's the, the thing that happened in my case. So having too much scripts and too much work and trying to find it. And also a very, very thing that uh, changed like all of our lives. And we st I used to work in office and then due to COVID, we all just got kicked off to home and for like working remotely or working wherever you are currently, which is great for me. But then I used to work like on two free, yeah, most of the time free screens, not more. But then I ended up like, I have a small place or, or usually I work where I am, not usually at my home. So I ended up working on a single laptop screen and it turned out that, that switching context between Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio or other tools and browser is where I waste a lot of my time. And then when I, what I also mentioned, uh, my family got bigger. So I started coding, like holding one hand, holding the kid and the other hand trying to write some code or trying to answer the team's call, uh, like and stand up and with your third hand, trying to find the teddy bear that just mag magically disappears all the time. And with your fourth hand, yeah, I guess you know what I mean. So I had a new situation in my life and let's say new maybe opportunities to, to find a solution for, for those problems. And I tried to find them first in the tools that are already on the market. Uh, but the first problem was, was where do I actually store my scripts? Maybe you already use this tool and presenting now. I used it a lot in when I was working for in SharePoint on prem. And I think it's a really cool tool that has every every feature you can find to to have everything everything regarding scripts in the context of your work. 
it has the documentation. You can uh, load any PowerShell module you want. You have the list of commands. You have the list of options. Great, but it's not great for me <laughs> because my scripts are usually in the context of my full project. So I have a bunch of files, JavaScript files, TypeScript, whatever. And then in the middle of it, oh, yeah, that's my script. Yeah, and it's in the middle in the context of my work. And it's usually as a script regarding this project, creating resources I need or maintenance stuff, whatever. And it's not always PowerShell. Sometimes, you know, now we can have even JavaScripts in JavaScript, whatever, right? So also this tool didn't uh, support all the libraries I use. It, those are not always PowerShell modules. I tend to favor also PMP, uh, PMP CLI for Microsoft 365. So maybe you have the same thing that I have. And this is these are the two most frequently projects I added in the open source, which don't have those scripts folder. Yeah, you can see them. And I'm pretty sure I will I would find a project you were working on that also had this folder, right? So I knew I need to fix my problem in VS Code. So I created a prototype solution for me <laughs> first, and it had the code snippets. It's a really perfect, like a kind of intelligence thing that gives you this autocomplete of a command you are trying to find or write, and you're you don't need to switch between the browser, copy paste the command or whatever, or, or remember it by heart. And of course, there are many tools now that give you a great uh, intelligence and context like GitHub Copilot, but the Copilot is actually uh, giving you uh, assumptions based on, on the context of your current work. It doesn't have the actual knowledge about this library. So this extension and the snippets will be better because it's, uh, it's, it's filled with the documentation and with the correct commands. So, uh, the GitHub Copilot could assume that we have an option like web URL in this command where it's not always in every command. And then I had the docs embedded. This is this was like perfect for me not to transfer between the console to the search for help or or between the browser. Uh, I had the list of command. I created a list of the commands. I will show it in a while. Yeah. Then we can browse every possible command for PNP PowerShell model or uh, CLI for Microsoft 65 inside of VS Code. And it started only for me, but then okay, I figured I just added icons, some more information in the package.json and and add a nice readme file and publish it to the market. And after a couple of days, it got more than one, downloaded than more than 100 times. And I got an awesome feedback from Paul and Valdex. So thank you very much. Based on their feedback and ideas, I added a third feature, which is a sample gallery. And I'm pretty sure you also had this problem like, okay, I have to create a new script. I won't start from scratch. I'll start browsing the web. Maybe someone already done it, maybe in a better way, or maybe along the way I will learn a new approach for this problem, right? So uh, I hope you already know this page. This is the PMP script sample gallery mentioned before also on this call. And it's a really uh, perfect place to find the like a kickstart example you're looking for. It has now more than uh, yeah, almost 300 scripts and uh, 189 scenarios, and so scripts in different uh, different versions of the same scenario. So um, it's pretty obvious that you, it's a perfect uh, spot to start looking for an example of maybe you are trying to, uh, of a thing you're trying to do currently. So instead of uh, transferring again to the browser, I also embedded this in the context of your work. And now if you would just browse for Microsoft 365 in the Visual Studio Code Marketplace, you will find free extensions, which I recommend all three of those because two of those are mine. <laughs> uh, but the third one is also really cool for, to, to test out. OK, so this is all for the slides. And now let's see the tool. Uh, so as I said, you can you can download the, either the PMP PowerShell extension uh, or the CLI for Microsoft 65 extension. They are really similar. Currently, there is only one difference in the favor of the PMP PowerShell because I didn't have energy to transfer transfer this functionality to the CLI, and it would be a bit different uh, because the, uh, at some level those technologies differ. Uh, and you can download them just you know browse download that's all. And then when we just start and let's change the language to maybe let's say PowerShell, the first feature I mentioned was the snippets. When we start just writing a command, as you can see, we get the full list of uh, the context of maybe a command we want to write. And if we can add the push the arrow to get a one liner description about this command, and maybe uh, with the all possible, uh, not all possible, but the obligatory options that need to be populated anyway when we write the command. And if I just hit tap, I get the command written for me and 
I can move move between the next obligatory options just hitting the tab button. And then if I want more context about this command that I am actually writing, it's all working the same for the PMP PowerShell. We can use uh, one of the two commands uh, created for with this extension. We can, if we are using CLI like I am now, we start like writing CLI. If we want to check for a command for PMP PowerShell, we start with PMP PS, PS and then th these are the commands we can use. So for the CLI, we can either open the script sample gallery, which I will show in a while, or open docs for this specific command, and then the command is pre-filled with what I selected. If I hit enter, and boom, that's there. I get the full docs from the, like the same thing you could browse, and even if you want to browse it, you can just go to go directly to this button, and then you'll transfer to the direct page in the in your default browser to to this command. But if you prefer not switching between contexts like I, you can just. Uh, go here and uh, check for help uh, and check for all possible options here and examples. And now we also in CLI add response. Of course, uh, you have the full list. So on the right side, the, uh, you can see the CLI. OK, this is uh, remembering what I typed uh, before. I have the PMP partial extension, uh, extension like picker and the CLI. And here we have the uh, list of all possible commands currently in this library, and uh, we can of course search for the one we we want to use, and then just pick it to to have uh, this um, this doc shown up. Uh, the other thing at the top, uh, okay, we can transfer to the to the side of this library, so either to the CLI homepage of the PMP PowerShell homepage, or we can open the sample gallery, which is the last feature I added, added lately. And uh, this, these are the same samples that you will find in the PMP script sample gallery, but for this one technology. So I am presenting uh, here in this extension all the samples that are valid for the CLI, not for every possible tag. And we can search, of course, by name, like on install, or by the author, like for example me, <laughs> or by the command. So let's say SPO list get, and here I can we will see all scripts uh, examples that are actually using this command, and with, we can go to the directly to the repo of the script, or with one click button we can create a new file which is pre-populated with the contents of this example. And we can also do like transferring between uh, from the command to the docs. Like, OK, let's see. I have this command. I want to sh see it in other examples. No problem. Let's uh, go to the to the docs first. I can read more details about it. And then here on the right side, you have the additional button show related samples, which which will go to the sample gallery page already pre-filled in the filter to get all the samples that is using this command. So with really low transferring like one one or two minor steps you can browse the full docs of this command or, or get all the examples in the pmp community that are using this command so we can kick off start and start working the one thing uh, which is additionally added in the pmp powershell which is not present in the cli yet is the tree view so in the commands uh, search uh, of course we can search like the, the flat list but at the right, uh, at, the, at the top in the right side, we have like the tree view. Then we have the commands grouped, and I can, for example, search for content type and see all the th things related for the, uh, adding a content type. The CLI extension doesn't have it yet because there will be like more granular, like a tree view, actually not just grouped by the possible verbs. And that's pretty all regarding the demo part. I hope you liked it. And the last slide I have is a small kind request for you to give me feedback, 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 and to contribute as well. But of course, it doesn't mean that you have to contribute to those extensions. You may, of course, and, and it would be really cool if you, if you would like to help me out. But of course, co contributing to PMP PowerShell or CLI for Microsoft 65 or adding a new sample to the script, PMP script samples repo is also a perfect way to improve these extensions because this, those extensions actually leverage the power of the documentation put it in, in those libraries, in those repositories. So if you are contributing to those, especially samples or uh, improvements in docs, then you're improving those extensions as well. So pretty awesome and thank you a lot. And then uh, if you could provide any kind of feedback, any comment, positive, negative, whatever, like, yeah, I don't use this tool, doesn't help me at all, it would be really great to hear it. If you find a bug and you're like laughing, 
It's also great. I like jokes. You can laugh with me. Just let me know about this bug so I can fix it because I would like to have this uh, tool working for more the more users as possible. If you have any ideas, then let me know because I like to develop your ideas instead of mine. Of course, I have some ideas to improve this tool, but I rather do something that I know that will be actually used by more people. And if you have any questions regarding those extensions or just CLI for Microsoft 65, just also let me know and I, if I can, I will help. So that's all I have to say. And I think I'll give the voice back to you, David. <laughs> Awesome, Adam. Really, really great job. Love these two extensions. Fantastic work. And by the way, everybody's loving your slides as well. So I think uh, the general sentiment when you're showing your slides was everybody just loves them. So fantastic work there.